I'm live. Hello. Welcome, welcome. All right. As usual, we do these live Q&As every Friday. Hopefully they're helpful. But today, what I want to start doing is um, I want to start working on an outline. So a lot of self-taught developers... Um, Okay, where do I start? I don't ever prepare for these. I need to like come up with my opening message. But I want to come up today, at least with a plan, if I had to start all over again as an aspiring web developer, what would I do, right? And I want to try to create an outline today to solidify that. This is nothing but a brainstorming session. I haven't prepared anything. I'm going to explore. Um, so if you want to chill and explore with me, that's fine. Um, my path is going to lean more on a self-taught path because that's what I would do. You know, when I graduated Full Stack Academy, I, I realized, and even one of the TAs said, like, you don't even need this program. And you don't realize that until after you're out of the program. Um, but you can learn everything online. But I think a lot of self-taught developers have trouble feeling confident that they're growing as a software engineer, that they're moving in the right direction, that they're getting the right support they need. How do I get all this? Especially if you don't know any software engineers, it can be super confusing. So I kind of want to create a plan for me if I were to go back in time and have to do it and I have this plan right in front of me, this is what I would do. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to actually probably pull up a couple of free curriculums to the side just to give me some ideas. But my goal would be to be a full stack developer. And so maybe that means today just figuring out how I'm going to really hone in on my, my front end skills before anything. Maybe I decide to learn back end first. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to figure that out today. So anyways, welcome. Uh, this is going to be a more casual stream for sure. Uh, have I done Code Academy Pro review interviews yet? Nope, I am not. Hey, Hologram. Welcome back. How you doing, buddy? So, I want to start with a few things. Let's go ahead and increase the font. Uh, there it is. Should be good. Yo. So, a few things. So, I started out with the self-taught developer path. I want to go over a few things that I feel were like question marks in my head and I really couldn't gain confidence that I could actually become a software engineer. I don't know if any of you can relate, but I felt like the whole time as a self-dot developer, I would have like moments where I'd be like, yeah, I can finally see myself moving in the right direction. And then the next week I'm like, I, how the hell am I ever going to become a software engineer? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not smart enough. Like, and I had several weeks like that and it was because I really didn't know if I was moving in the right direction. Hey, Susie, how you doing? Duvan? Oh, Duva, Duvan XO, 303, welcome. Um, all right, so as I go through this, I want you to, um, if you feel like you've, you've gotten really, really stuck in your point, in your path with becoming a software engineer, let me know. And maybe we can figure out ways, we could even work backwards, but maybe we can figure out ways to like overcome that. Are you struggling to figure out how to build projects? Are you struggling to understand promises in JavaScript? Like, what are you struggling with? Because these are issues I know I would be struggling with, so we can come up with a plan. Like the, an outline like this, I feel like would take multiple streams to, to come up with. So I don't mind working backwards and then eventually solidifying and putting everything together for you guys. You can definitely relate to that. Okay. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Vivian. Welcome. How you doing? Just found your channel a few days ago. You're making great content, man. Keep up the good works. Thanks so much. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to stutter through this whole thing. Thanks so much, Alexander. I appreciate that. Welcome. A lot of people are finding me through the video of the self-taught, uh, where people are just sharing their self-taught uh, stories. That's taking off in the algorithm. I'm super excited about that. I did not expect that video to take off, but it is. So a lot of people... I think a lot of self-taught developers are coming into the channel, which is really cool. So we can focus a little bit more on self-taught that path 
and balance it out because we've been focusing on coding boot camps a lot. All right, so what, what did I struggle with, right? Um, so I'm just gonna just type a few things, right? Started with PHP to build a world, uh, no, I mean, long time ago. I'm t when I started to get serious, uh, was it like World of Warcraft? Was that the game back then I was playing? To build a... Uh, okay, I remember. Okay, so I uh, who scrapped together a website for my web hosting business. I just want to make extra money when I was 18. That's all I wanted to do. I needed to put a website together. And so slowly I kind of just experimented with different like game apps, uh, game web apps that would focus on like creating communities around the game or creating um, advice around the games. I, I used to be a pretty heavy gamer, not so much anymore. But when I quit my last job to start coding, I like I had this confidence like I want to do it the right way. And my one-on-ones, everyone wants to do it the most efficient way. And I get it, right? We, we want to, we don't want to waste our lives away. We have limited time in life. Eventually, everyone's going to die. Very pessimistic view, but it's also a very optimistic view to realize like there's, there's a lot that you can gain out of life and you start receiving those rewards when you take your time seriously. It's people that think like, when I'm, like I'm young, I'm never going to get old and having that mindset will slow you down from hitting your goals. And I think as you get older, you realize how short time is. And so you start taking advantage of what life has to offer. So it's a really cool, where am I going with this? I don't, I'm just going off on a tangent. But anyways, you want to be efficient with your time. And when you start getting to that mindset, a lot of times you want like a course, a curriculum to really solidify that for you. That's what I wanted. So I, I started with Treehouse. Teaching me fundamentals. I wanted to learn the right way. Because all my apps before, they were like, kind of quirky apps and I figured out how to build like a ticket system and forms and it was really buggy and I didn't really know security very well so I wanted to do it the right way so I could get hired so I started with a cheap course and that's probably what I would do we'll break all this down more starting probably from here um, and so what do I learn right this is where I want to start exploring right now all right uh hey Susie have you thought about doing vids on data science? I know that is not your expertise. Um, no, I've gotten the request quite a few times, but no. I think I'm going to exclusively stick to coding specifically. I don't believe there's a lot of coding with data science. Um, maybe you write algorithms to manipulate and aggregate data, but I just, yeah, it's probably going to be focused on coding. So I could, I could see myself exploring more DevOps and machine learning, stuff like that, but probably not data science in the near future. Uh, Real Tough Candy gave you a shout out on her stream about Treehouse. She did a video on it. Oh, did she? I'll look it up. Real Tough Candy. Real Tough. Thank you for letting me know. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I recognize that name. Didn't she comment on that video? Candy Treehouse. I'll look it up, though. Cool. That's very kind of her. Um, okay. So what do I want to learn as a, and feel free to ask questions. You know, I'll pause every once in a while if, um, and we'll go ahead and answer some questions if you guys want me to. So I remember starting, this is, this is my true belief. So every time I have a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, there, there are many people that want me to like solidify their path for them. And I, I never... All my mentorship sessions are focused on you becoming more resourceful so you can do this yourself. Like, that's what mentorship is about, in my opinion. And um, I'm pretty successful with it. Maybe not everyone gets, um, I, I don't know, I don't have ratings for my one-on-ones. I really don't. But it feels like people no longer depend on me afterwards, and they, they kind of start moving in the right direction. But part of that is figuring out like what has you interested in coding in the first place, right? That's going to solidify your path. A lot of people just want to switch to software engineering as a career, which is a really, it, it could be a very good step, but you have to figure out like, okay, but what's going to keep me in this career? How, like, am I going to get bored of this? Um, and you have to figure that out. And you can only figure that out from kind of dipping your toes in coding, figuring out what it can really do. And so... You have to think about like what type of applications 
are you curious to be able to build down the road? Maybe not like right now, right? But maybe you're an entrepreneur at heart, and so maybe the coding that you're learning is really just being able to put up an application, a pricing model behind it, because you know a problem that exists, you wanna solve it. And sometimes that even just means like being able to learn basic HTML and CSS to build that landing page, right? Very often with companies and startups, you want to get pre-signups and there's certain strategies that you could do, but you want to gauge the interest in your application. Um, and I mean, if you're going the investor route, um, that's a whole other route. We're not going to talk about that. But yeah, if, if you want to be capable of being able to build your application as an entrepreneur, it's, it's using that result that you eventually, you want to know enough to be able to build your solution, the MVP of your solution, and you have to backtrack and figure out all the pieces of that, right? For me, being able to build a uh, web hosting company website, I had to learn how to integrate. I, I leaned on integrations that solved a lot of problems for me, like my ticket system, um, the automation that connected to setting up servers, and there's going to be background noise. Um, I open my windows because it's really hot in here. Let me know if it's too loud, though. So you have to figure out like what has you interested in coding besides making more money. And sometimes that means starting with, you know, do I start with fundamentals? Or um, what would you call it? Like, um, or, or start with a complex project in mind. Right, so typically, I always encourage people to think about what would be neat to build. Maybe it isn't even a website. Maybe it's a mobile app. Maybe it's a, an Electron app uh, through JavaScript. You would love to build. I mean, one thing I love about JavaScript is you could do a lot with it. You could um, you could build desktop applications, mobile applications. You could build a back end, front end. JavaScript can do a lot, which is why I personally love JavaScript. It's not the easiest language to learn at first, but you need to figure this out. You need to figure this out. I started, hey, Fabian. I started the Treehouse Basic 25 option last week. I will start the complete boot camp from new camp this November. I got a second job. That is weekends only so I can pay for the, that's awesome. Yo, that's awesome, congrats. You have to come back and let us know how it's going. I, I, I still, his support is taking a very long time to even get back to me. Maybe they saw my video, maybe they know my email address and they're like, we're just not gonna respond to this guy. Cause I, I wasn't exactly, I was probably friendlier than other people were uh, with my Treehouse review, but um Treehouse, I still think the material for the $25 a month is still a pretty good option to jump into fundamentals. And I might even do that. Honestly, that's if, you know, we just did a video about Treehouse and laying off a lot of people, but the material that they've developed still has a lot of good fundamental courses. And so I probably, I mean, we could just like, I guess I'm talking about uh, some gripes I had with my previous journey, but uh, we could start with, it would probably be, okay, uh, think of a project, uh, think of types of projects that sound cool to build. It's kind of like a really shallow sentence, right? There's a lot of depth in software engineering, but even just like, even just watching like hacker movies, it's okay to have like these cheesy, you know, basically just a bunch of packages building, but it looks like someone's hacking the computer. Like even having that inspire you, it's really shallow. But a lot of us, I think a lot of those old time movies got us kind of curious about coding and what we could do with technology, right? It's okay to have like really shallow objectives at first, but I think... But I think as you learn more fundamentals and you learn what you can truly do with code, that will start sparking ideas. That will start helping you. Like you, there's two things you need to be able to do. You need to be able to identify problems that can have technical solutions, but you also need to know what technical solutions exist. In learning fundamentals, 
will help solidify it'll help you connect these technical solutions of what you could do with these problems. It'll help you understand the landscape. It'll help you understand technology in general. It'll help you understand, you know, like the whole system. And eventually like you learn fundamentals and you start piecing together how the front end works with the back end and how packages work and what are integrations and, um, you know, even how to become more efficient with your solutions. Like a lot of this is taught through courses and it's done very well the big key component people fail at is they don't pair it with personal projects. So what I'm going to do is we're going to just start with front end. Some core concepts with front end that I would recommend myself if I could go back in time to learn. And so we'll probably start with basic HTML. I feel overwhelmed with what I want to learn sometimes. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, the pressure of seeing how people post on social media about getting their first job. What about, what post increased that pressure for you? What kind of posts are causing you to feel overwhelmed? I know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, studying Node and React, but it's, so much stuff from HTML till now. One guy got an internship after HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and learning React on job. Wonder if I should do the same. Hopefully, this can solidify it for you. It's, I mean, like, what do you want to build? As you're learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, start thinking about what you want to build. What can you build? You need to start asking yourself that because um, a lot of you, you have to shift this mindset of trying to get a job. You, like that can be your end goal, but it has to be something of more substance. Why, like, what do you want to build? Why is a company, why should they give a crap to hire you? Everyone wants a job. Why should they hire you? You know, because you have learned HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And now all of a sudden you've learned, like you've built a few projects and you've learned how React really helps compartmentalize a lot of things, helps you kind of like have a modular mindset. Um, and it helps you start thinking about more architecture. Now you're really fascinated with taking a code base and creating like reusable components and like making the dev team more efficient. Like that's literally like one thing you could become passionate about or the company's like, wow, we need that, right? And so you have to keep coding. You have to keep building projects and find what is interesting to you to become more interesting to the company. Why should they hire you over everything else? Because you have an, a unique passion or interest. You have a unique focus in what you're learning and why you're learning to code. You have to go past, I just want a job. I want to do the bare minimum to get that job. I get it, Anthony. But um, coding, I want to tell you, software engineering, and I, I tell people this all the time, software engineering should not be an immediate goal if you are struggling to pay the bills and take care of your family, right? That's a terrible goal. Most people give up on it. It's a very, it's a hard industry to get into. And once you shift that mindset, oh, you don't even see what I'm typing. Oh my God. Professional live streamer, by the way. There we go. You can see that, right? Oh my God, I'm horrible at this. All right. Sometimes I'll pause a TV show, movie, commercial when I see code flying by that they're using to make something look complicated a lot of times. It's just HTML. Like a lot of your, you're absolutely right, hologram. A lot of your uh, even templated images that you get from like Canva and stuff like that and uh, Shutterstock, is that the website? I don't know, there's tons of image website. It's literally just like HTML code and like really basic stuff. It's kind of funny. Other people getting their first job, people saying how they learn how to code in six months, et cetera. I mean, those are, those are the exception, not the rule. And that's why like I've always talked about like Chris Sean inspired me to become a developer a long time ago, but also his three month journey is completely unrealistic. And I don't think he did a good job of like really, uh, you know, when you get content creators like that, sometimes they really show you how glamorous coding can be, but they don't really like dive into the nitty gritty of what it takes to becoming a software engineer. And I'm not picking on Chris Sean specifically, like a, a lot of content creators do this. And 
I think a more realistic window is like one to two years, typically, that it might take someone. Even if you're coming out of a coding boot camp, if it's a pretty good one, it can condense that time, but sometimes you're still gambling with that. Um, but I think more realistic expectations of like at least a year, most people take at least a year in my opinion. I would have to like look at data from my community, but most people are going to take at least a year. The six month thing, don't, if, if those posts are bothering you that much, literally just like mute that person or something like that. You have to control you. We receive so much information. There's nothing wrong with muting people that are delivering information that are discouraging you. It doesn't mean they're trying to harm you in any way. It's just you, we have a huge intake of information, consolidate that feed and make sure only information that is making you better and it encourages you to wake up and get excited about coding, curate that information. And you're going to find that you're going to find, did I just say that twice? You're going to find that motivation will come more easily to you. I think a lot of people would find more motivation if they curated their Twitter feeds better, if they curated their LinkedIn feeds better, even their YouTube training. You can train the YouTube algorithm to only show you stuff that's going to make you more productive. We're human. I get it. You're going to watch a cat video. You're going to watch some other video to like take you off guard and distract you and you have to combat that. Sometimes it helps to have multiple YouTube channels or one is just like coding focused. One is, you know, random videos, but curate your feed and you'll find that motivation will come a little bit more easy. Er. Hey Ludo, how's it going? I think that is why Code Academy is good because they give baby project if you aren't good at thinking about them on your own. And so courses that help pair your projects, um, it can be pretty good. A lot of good courses will do that and there's an effective, it's an effective strategy for people that do, like they, they can't grasp what projects they can really build yet, right? And also it helps to like, like these course-based projects are really good at helping you at least reinforce your skills a little bit, but also they take the guesswork out of it. You don't have to come up with features. You don't have to come up with a solution, right? They kind of tell you what to build, and it could if you pair it immediately with what you just learned, it could be very helpful for reinforcing your skills. Now, there's not a lot of depth with that in thinking about it in a complex manner, which I always tell people to do to reinforce your skills, but it there is a stage in your learning where that's effective, and then you branch out and build your own project after they've held your hand. So the Code Academy does that. It sounds pretty good. Depends on what you're learning, T. It depends on what you're learning. Um, do, 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 do. How realistic? 1.5 years with the coding? It depends on the coding boot camp. I wouldn't even... I wouldn't even guarantee that it's going to shorten your time span going to a coding boot camp. Um, it depends on you. It really does. That's why I spend like 30 minutes in my one-on-ones just asking questions before I give any sort of advice or try to curate um, a path forward. I'm currently coding four hours a day, not going to lie. Coding is the hardest thing I have ever done. You know... Tyrone, I can empathize with that. I mean, I graduated with a bachelor's in psychology at, at Purdue, which wasn't that, I don't think psychology at Purdue is that hard. But like, graduating with any degree is, is something you should be proud of, and I never felt proud of it, ever. Um, I didn't go to my graduation ceremony. I don't even know if I still have the diploma. Um, and I think graduating a coding boot camp was the first thing I felt proud of with my career. Um, and then getting that first coding position was something I was very proud of. So I, I completely, it, like, it's a really, really tough thing to do. And getting that first position, um, it's something you should definitely feel proud of. It's a, it's a hard career to get into, which is why if you're trying to, like, up your income and you're desperate to do it, software engineering, I think is, you're going to have a really tough time with it. Get your finances in order and then pursue software engineering. I do front-end mentor to check if I understand what I have learned. That's a good idea, Tyrone. And that's part of probably what I'm going to uh, 
write in my outline. I, I think having a mentor, even if it's starting just like having YouTube mentors, right? Having YouTube mentors that resonate with you, you like their personality, they're encouraging. And like, you know, if you are watching a, a mentor on YouTube, you finish watching their video and you don't feel at least a little bit more inspired, like you wasted time consuming content if you're watching like inspirational videos. Um, to me, it, it's a waste of time. So you have to make, like if that, waste of time didn't at least inspire you a little bit and give you a little bit of a push it's you choose a different content creator you have to find the content creator that does inspire you and then i don't know it's a little bit less of a waste of time if it encourages you to code for like two more hours you know what i mean sometimes you have to go back to those videos but start with content creators as your mentors and you could pay for mentorship you can join hackathons and this is more going to be in the outline um i guess i should write it um, we'll talk about this. Learn fundamentals. Um, and later in the process, it's like find uh, mentors or at least other aspiring developers, right? And that can be joining um, Try a Hackathon. Try a Hackathon. I still have never done a Hackathon. Isn't that crazy? I promote them all the time. They're really useful. Um, but I still have never done a Hackathon. So try a hackathon, uh, join um, developer communities. Um, you know, some areas are going to be more open. We're, we're living in interesting times. So if you do live in an area that's open, you can consider in-person meetups. If not, online Discord, uh, Slack, developer communities. And it's, it's just about, and what do you do here? This is the important part. You don't just join it and put it in the background. You engage with people you build relationships right because i think part of giving up the self-taught developer path a lot of people don't feel like they have the support they need and support can come from just empathizing with other aspiring developers and you can even what does that mean it could even lead into uh building a project with someone, uh, finding a uh, mentor that's in the field. There are a lot of senior developers that will sit in these communities and they want to help people out. Like you, you can only at a company, especially if you're a senior developer at the same company for like three years, after that three year point, it's like things start getting a little bit more repetitive and you want to challenge yourself. You in senior developers will find ways to give back and contribute more. It's, it's because they're bored. Senior developers get bored, right? Eventually you kind of learn your stack. And um, so you can, you do stuff to give back and you'll find it in Slack communities, Discord communities, meetups. Sometimes they so start YouTube channels, stuff like that. But I'm telling you, those senior developers are willing to help you. You just have to make sure that you're not like you, when you approach people in general, you just have to make sure that you're respecting your time like coming into communities asking, hey, I want to learn to code. Can anyone help? Like that is such a like, it's such a waste of your time to type a message like that because you haven't really thought about what type of help you need. You haven't really built any relationships in the community. And it's it, you just come across as someone that's trying to use someone else for their time. Where you when you engage with the community and people start to like you and you're, you share your project, I'm like, you know, I just, this is my first JavaScript project. It's really cool. I got excited about this. But it kind of sucks. You know, I don't think it's going to get me hired. Um, does anyone have any feedback for me? Like that alone and that humbleness, people are going to love to give feedback. People love giving feedback. And you, you need to come into communities like that with that type of mindset. And eventually, when you continue to engage like that, you build relationships, you build mentor relationships. That's how, that's an effective way at engaging in a community and like just building the strong relationships that will help finally propel you into until you get that first position. I could go off on a rant on like how people come into my discord community and like the effective messages and the messages where they get no responses. It's like, there's a very big difference. Now my, my discord community is really small there. You can see this a lot more with bigger communities. All right. Elite code. In Code Academy, what about it? One hundred percent, seeing the project done in the process—it's the best feeling in the world. Oh yeah, yep. 
So many graveyard projects. Finish your project. It just makes you feel good to finish a project and finally move on to the next one. It creates like, it's a weird psychological feeling to, like you're never going to be satisfied. It's never gratifying when you keep moving pr from project to project. It never feels like you've closed one chapter of your book to move on to the next challenging chapter. It just seems like you're hopping and that's how you can feel overwhelmed is when you keep jumping project to project. Am I even making progress? How do I know? Well, you know because you analyzed your old projects a month ago and if you didn't complete it, like... It's a very low value project to analyze to see if you're making progress. I am doing the front end engineering course and I also use a front end mentor to test my knowledge. I like that. Front end mentor definitely helped me realize I didn't actually understand CSS. Oh, are you guys talking about like a specific mentorship program? Front end mentor. I think you guys are. I, I thought you just like found some random front end mentor. Front end mentor is great for testing your skills with projects. Is that like a specific thing? You make great points. Do you have any advice when you know generally when you're ready for a job? <laughs> no, you don't know. You don't know until you start applying. You don't know until you start getting challenges that you're like, what? They're testing me over this? What? Why? And it's okay to question some of the interview process, but you can use the interview process as a little bit of a, you know what you could do if you're part of a community, you could be like, hey, I just got challenged with these kind of questions. Um, I wasn't prepared for them. Are these typical in interviews? And you can ask other aspiring developers, what was their experience in the interview process? Um, so honestly, what I want to do, I just, I can't do it yet. Like if I had like, maybe I could set like a Patreon goal to do it so I, I don't have to focus so much on YouTube right now. I don't know. But eventually, uh, I want to create like this free giant outline of like what you should know before uh, to feel at least fairly confident that you're going to be marketable and competitive with employers. And I, I think that's the big thing is like, do I know enough about promises? Do I know enough about... Um, I don't know, the uh, JavaScript loop. Do I know enough about like how the front end connects with the back end? How much should I know as a front end position? I, this is the outline that I actually want to eventually build for free for everyone. Um, it's just, I, I'm still dipping into my savings. I'm still at, like not at that point in my company where I can spend a lot of time with that. But eventually, I think it would be really helpful to develop this giant outline and even like test to help test your knowledge in certain areas where I think companies are going to care about. So... The best way to go about it, like I said, get interviews, talk about it with your developer community, and it's just talking with people, getting like what was their interview like, what questions did they ask, stuff like that. So this is huge. Our brain hurts a lot. Nice name. Um, this is actually huge. This should not result in portfolio projects. Now you're dealing with copyright legal issues, but what this should do, is when you are learning CSS, a super effective way, and this is going to be part of it, um, CSS, a super effective way, um, reinforce, wait, re, that's how you spell, right? Yeah. Reinforce uh, concepts through uh, design mockups to mobile desktop versions. So this is a really interesting strategy. This will help reinforce what you're learning with CSS by basically taking a design and trying to create it with HTML and CSS, which is what you're going to be doing as a developer. You get these mockups. That's typically what you're going to be doing as a developer. So what this allows you to do is um, it allows you to not have to think about the design, which I think holds a lot of aspiring front-end developers back because a lot of front-end developers aren't good at design. I was never good at design, and I had three front-end heavy focus positions. Um, more for the first two, I don't know. My positions changed. Anyways, um, this technique helps solidify like really hard concepts. I CSS is so quirky, and when you get different designs, 
and you work with different designs, sometimes you get like a container, an element that just looks really weird, or you have this triangle that's floating up into this other container. You're like, you never really thought to do that, but you're like, how the hell am I supposed to do this? And then you figure it out, right? And you get to experiment with CSS and move things around. And um, there's a website where you would actually have contests of like, people would come up with brand new designs of this website only by adding a different CSS file. It's really interesting. I can't think of the name of the website. If you guys know, let me know in the chat. But usually you get desktop mockups. If you're lucky, you get mobile mockups. If you're really lucky, you get tablet-based mockups um, where the designers really thought out thoroughly the uh, what the design is going to look like at different media breakpoints. But if you only have a desktop mobile or a desktop mockup, you convert it over. Now I have to figure out what this should look like with mobile. And that's an interesting skill to build up as a developer because that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be making recommendations. You're going to be in design and UX talks potentially as a front end developer. And you're going to be like, you have to like start limiting the information of what you're trying to deliver. And you really have to deliver the basic minimal information on a mobile device that either educates the user or it gets them to take the action that you want them to take. And so you have to be thoughtful about, okay, I have this random design mockup. Now I have to think about like, what's the effective parts of this design mockup? What is it designed to do? And now I have to strip some things away that are unimportant and keep the important things. That's a harder thing to do than people realize. And that's a skill you need to build up. Um, and that's, yeah, reinforcing. And this alone will reinforce a lot of um, your CSS skills. You're still going to have to build your own projects. What are your best tips? All right, I'll catch up. I'll catch up with chat. I appreciate everyone's chat messages. Um, what are your best tips for finding a mentor? Um, kind of showed it. Get involved with uh, developer communities, um, hackathons, meetups. It's just getting yourself out there and talking with other developers. That's the best way to go about it. It's not as hard as people think, but people don't put a lot of effort into it and they kind of just send messages like, can you be my mentor? I need help with growing. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to become a developer. I need help. Can you be my mentor? Like that's not, you have to think about what kind of interaction is going to make a mentor want to help you. And that's a, a skill in itself that you're going to have to build. Do you think it's okay to include the harder projects for ment uh, front end mentor on a portfolio? I'm not sure. I don't know what front end mentor is. I really don't. I'm not sure if that would be similar to including Udemy projects. Most likely, yeah. Um, you're, you should build projects of your own. Tell me, I mean, do they outline the project that you're supposed to build? If so, I mean, yeah, it's low value projects, templated projects that other people are probably gonna have on their portfolio as well. And I think that's the thing. It's like, are other people gonna have these projects on their portfolio as well? Does that really tell the interviewer what makes you unique and passionate about coding? Like, what? where are your interests? Sometimes people's interests are in their old industry. That's why I usually lean on this. They're, but they just don't wanna be, you know, um, a, a, a support specialist or sales in that department or handle the financial, but they really love their industry and they would love to be a software engineer. They understand the problem. So why, like what gets you super excited about coding? Like what kind of projects would you love to build that you think people would enjoy using? Uh, so it's, yeah, I would say they're a little bit more low value projects there. Yeah, it's got projects with Figma, sketch files for you to reproduce. Yeah. Front end mentor is a mock-up of websites you can challenge yourself to build. Yeah. So I would say it's it's low value projects. Um, and I you're to build put it as portfolio projects, it it would depend. Like, do they have the copyright, uh, the IP of that project? And are they releasing that to anyone building it? Right? Are they giving you permission to use that freely? And especially like commercial purposes, now it's a whole other set of things. So I would say from a legal standpoint, maybe just use that as practice unless you truly know what the license says and you can understand it. I'm popping my head in music that you guys can't hear, but I promise you it's, it's good music. 
I watched a couple of your videos and decided to start watching from start. I decided to make a career in, or change my career and become a software developer. Hey, well, welcome to the channel. Glad to have you. Welcome, welcome. Currently started getting ready for a coding boot camp. Which coding boot camp? That's exciting. Buy a course on Udemy to get into it. You need to finish it. That's the most important part. And that do HTML and CSS projects and buy another course on JS. Yeah. Experimenting first before you go into any coding boot camp, I think is a great strategy. Are you currently working as a developer? No, I quit my last web developer job almost two years ago to build my company helping software engineers. All right. All right, cool. So I'm going to have to interrupt. I'm just going to be honest with you. I have to pee, okay? I have to pee. So give me one second, and I will be right back. I am back. Thank you for waiting patiently. This is the, um, I'm going to copy this link in chat what I'm listening to since I don't have it playing. Eighties synth wave. How much is code dojo? You could probably look that up. All right, so let's continue with our outline. Um, all right, so I probably would start with the course to teach me fundamentals. I think it's completely fine. I, I, I you know, I, when I say you should come up with like, when I say you should think about what you would love to build, it doesn't mean you have to have an answer right away, but it, it's something you should keep in the back of your mind as you continue to get better and learn more fundamentals and you learn what you could do with coding. Right. So reinforce uh, with CSS. This is more of just advice. So what, what should you learn with HTML? Just basic HTML structure. Um, I'm not going to go over like super specific stuff with this outline, but you want to understand why HTML exists, how it is different than CSS. Um, sometimes it could even start with like getting a basic, uh, template, right? Looking at a basic template, um, and then breaking that down and learning fundamentals. So the idea of HTML is it gets, it can get a little bit complicated with like how it's interpreted with the browser and what it even means. So I think a really important part of HTML is understand why semantic HTML is important. Right, So you can't just do a template. I think understanding why semantic HTML is important will help you learn what HTML is really for and like where the separation of concern starts coming in. When do you need CSS, right? You technically can, you know, change different colors. There are like old HTML elements that would allow you to do some basic stuff that CSS could accomplish, but should you? Is that really semantic HTML and why is that important? And so a course that like recommends and starts splitting up the differences between HTML and CSS and when to use each, that's a good fundamental course for front end specifically. And so 
you're going to learn some basic elements and you might even pair it with CSS where I'm going to go ahead and manipulate this element in a certain way. Um, but typically you're going to learn basic structure, semantic HTML first, and like really get this down before you jump into CSS, in my opinion. You know, your course might do it a little bit differently, but understand why this is important. I'm like repeating myself because this is actually important. This is a part people neglect pretty often. Um, and as you learn more CSS and you start building more complex applications, especially when you get JavaScript involved, you're going to go back and you're still going to like, you're going to be learning semantic HTML for a long time. You're going to be learning accessibility. Semantic HTML is important. Why, uh, what's with accessibility? Why is it important, right? And this is stuff that you will learn eventually, but don't, don't skip over just this. But now I want to dive into CSS specifically and go over some concepts because CSS is really interesting. There's, there's a lot of complexity to it in terms of like CSS can do a lot. And also you have to understand uh, a really cool website is um, can I use can I use.com. Um, this is a really cool website to use because you have to understand each CSS property has different amounts of support with different browsers. You know, in CSS, obviously, like you don't really know who your client is, and it can be a balancing act of figuring out who's really going to use your app. And that's understanding your users specifically. So, for example, there are, you know, CSS Grid is a really cool tool uh, to use. Um, it's something I, in my career, never learned for a specific purpose because at that time it wasn't well supported across browsers. And I, like my second company, we partnered with educational institutions that had very, that had like a very tight knit, secure IT system that only allowed older versions of the browsers because they were the most secure. And it's like we couldn't really use. Uh, CSS grid because we understood our clients and, and who was using our product. Whereas we could use Flexbox, thankfully, because I couldn't use Flexbox in my first job. That was rough. Um, but understanding that, um, just kind of like seeing what prop, as you learn more properties, pair it with can I use, see how supported it is. Um, I would say CSS grid is a little bit more accepted, but you're, you might have some viewers that, that can't use it. All right, let me catch up with chat. I see it flowing. Yo, Chuck, it's getting paid by your employer. That is awesome. That is awesome. Synthwave is awesome. I agree. Oh, you have a Synthwave. Um, of course you do. I've seen your background before. Hey, Kimberly, welcome back. I started watching you a week ago and now I know what to do. Thank you. That's awesome. I started a boot camp with UCSD extension on September. I'm assuming that's like some coding boot camp at a college first and it's exciting overall thank you for breaking everything down hey that's awesome you're moving forward ah, it's so exciting once you finally like if you do decide you're going to pick a program and you finally pick it you're like whoo and then you get excited for the program and you can now you can start uh, experimenting building stuff doing prep work and like really digging in even more it's just like anytime you get to solidify your path a little bit and commit to something it i i feel like it creates targeted learning now you're just not you're not like well what do i learn you're like okay i have to learn this for this reason because i committed to this so programs like that can help with commitment as well but that's that's exciting your thumbnail for this stream is hilarious by the way i swear like a fifth grader could draw something better than my thumbnail but it's fun i bet you there are fifth graders that would like insult my thumbnail it is so Childish and I love it. I want to create more thumbnails like that. Hey, Jeremy, how's it going? One thing that would be very exciting for me to build would be to make a Squarespace clone. Those sites have me interested in how they are built. Oh, they are built to work. Yeah, so um, in Full Stack Academy, one of the capstone projects was a template builder. Um, I didn't work on that project. It was another group, but I think it was a really ambitious project and they basically built a website builder. And in fact, with, I, um, when I was still living in Chicago, I was hosting a lot of meetups. Um, I opened up kind of like, um, I could only take a few people in, but I opened up a 
a larger open source project to be able to build a website builder. It failed miserably because I did not have the t I didn't realize how much time I had to invest into like mentoring all of these, the, even just like a few people. I think I had four people total. Uh, but we were going to build a website builder, and I think it's a pretty ambitious project to build. If you are interested and super curious about that, um, I think that could be a really fun project. I would even think about, though, um, like getting, thinking like the minimum thing that Squarespace could produce. Like, what were they building when they first launched? Like, what was their MVP? And try, even trying to like replicate something like that and figure out how you would build something like that and then making it unique. Now you can add features to it. Now you can think about like what does Squarespace lack or what features could serve a different, more unique targeted audience that they decided not to go with. Now you have a website builder that's unique and could actually be a fairly valuable portfolio project and not just a clone. So that could be a really fun project to build. Should I keep my non-tech related experiences in my resume LinkedIn or keep it only web dev stuff before start knocking on doors? So if it's, I mean, if it's non-tech related, like you don't feel like it's going to transfer over, I think it's helpful to have um, a work history, but you don't have to have like three bullet points for your restaurant management position. You know what I mean? So if it's less relevant, I think it's helpful to have a work history to just show you haven't been sitting on your butt and you've been, you're, con you know, you're a fairly ambitious person that's working and trying to better yourself and you want something for your future. You know, like showing that through a basic work history and not letting that fill up your entire resume, that can be pretty effective. But your web development experience is like you're selling yourself as a software engineer. So that's going to be very minimal uh, in my opinion. So Yeah. You can't, it depends. That's a big, it depends. I would just keep it very minimal to show that you've been working. Um, and then if it's not relatable, talk about the projects you built, like really highlight those projects you've just built. Hey, glad to hear that, Jeremy. Glad to hear that. Jeremy, our video is uh, growing. It's, uh, it's taking off in the uh, YouTube algorithm. Hey, Colin, how are you doing? That's cute. That's his whole family as his thumbnail. Um, let's see. It is great. I was starting down the self-taught path, and one of my bosses actually encouraged me to look to see what our education program offers. Turns out the boot camp was offered. That is awesome, Chuck. That is super awesome. Seriously. Yeah, take advantage of those if you can get that. Currently working in HR and they're paying for coding. That's interesting. Yeah, it is. Uh, I would be surprised if you're not getting more messages. But um, yeah, it's at like 50,000 views right now. It's building up my channel. It's literally the video that's helping my channel pick up momentum, which is really cool. I look at the analytics every day and I'm super excited about it. But it's also attracting a lot of self-taught developers. And I'm realizing how many people just don't have the money to dump into a coding boot camp, and I want to help those people. So that's kind of why I'm doing a little bit more self development live streams and trying to balance things out. I'm actually looking for apprenticeships. It looks like a great way to start. It can be careful. There are companies that, you know, we've we've talked about one where it kind of treats it like an apprenticeship. You just have to know the details you're getting into. Uh, but they can be very effective. The idea of an apprenticeship is a good strategy. The idea of it. It's just the uh, devil's usually in the details with stuff like that. And they're harder to come by. But it doesn't hurt to look. I'm actually seeing an uptick on connections on LinkedIn. They're all referencing the video. Okay. That's cool. That's really cool. People want to connect with you. They should. All three of you like gave... I mean, I was impressed because all three of you showed, I don't know, a lot of vulnerability. Like, we, we got really vulnerable with our conversations. I think uh, people really appreciate that. Um, all right. So I think this is kind of cool. I was able to answer a lot of questions. Um, I have a feeling this outline is something I probably will have to continue to work on. Uh, but 
with CSS, um, what are some concepts with CSS? I wanna, uh, I'm gonna steal a couple curriculums, free curriculums. Doesn't Rhythm have a free curriculum? I don't know. Um, I had a couple websites up. Where'd they go? Uh, I just want ideas. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wing this a little bit, I guess. With CSS, start with manipulating basic HTML elements. Changing colors. Have text float across the screen. Make things bigger. Make them smaller. Move things, position things. Figure out why that second element won't is stuck on the top left corner. You need to play around with CSS. You have to play around with it. You have to have fun. When you start getting comfortable with the CSS fundamentals, it's not about like trying to build a perfect portfolio page with your first project. It's not about that. It's literally just moving things. And this is another thing. Don't rely, we're gonna capitalize this, this is important. Don't rely on Flexbox or CSS Grid. So there's a cool program, uh, Derek, I did an interview with Derek, oh, I'm blanking on his program. You guys will find it in my videos. But he goes over like the history of CSS. Why is that important? Well, from what I understood, and I could be wrong, he started with like basic CSS, with, like he started with like floats and positioning and stuff that Flexbox and CSS Grid can really help you with, but he started with like positioning with really fundamental old school CSS can be hard to do and how to position things with floats and how floats work and what, why the heck are my margins collapsing and why aren't they collapsing when I thought they should be collapsing and like figuring out those fundamentals before you lean on floats or before you lean on uh, Flexbox or CSS grid and positioning things with CSS in that manner, that's going to help you really master CSS. These kind of things make things interesting. It's the same thing with React. I talk about all the time. It's like stop jumping into React so quickly. Like build, literally build the virtual DOM. Build a basic version of the virtual DOM before you even jump into React if you really want to understand how the virtual DOM works. I mean, there's a lot of complexity to what React's done because they have an entire team building it for years and years. But you like people pass over these fundamentals way too quickly. And I did as well. And so the problem is, here's what I did. Here's like a huge mistake I made with Treehouse. Yeah, I'm just going to say hugest. Is that, is that how you spell? Is hugest a word? Uh, largest mistake I made with Treehouse. Okay. I passed over the fundamental. So I learned the fundamentals. Treehouse was amazing at teaching me the fundamentals. I went into more complex concepts without reinforcing those fundamentals. This was huge. The number of times I went through a treehouse course and really tried, like I felt so confident about learning the fundamentals and I felt like, man, I'm really making tons of progress. And then I would even go into courses that taught harder concepts and I would feel like I was understanding those harder concepts and I wouldn't do the project until the end of the course. I wouldn't write my own code. And I'm not talking about their little challenges. I wouldn't write my own code on the side, pulled up a text editor, create an HTML and CSS file. I wouldn't write that code until I was done with the course. And then I would try to 
like build a very basic element and position it and try to use what I just learned. And I'm like, I forgot everything. And I did this over and over and over. And I kept forgetting, I kept forgetting it. And then I would go back into this tutorial and I would, I'd reference it. And then I, I'm like, okay, now I get it. Now I can build it again. And so I'd reference it. I'd almost like copy, you know, what the, the course is doing. I'm like, okay, this is how you build this element and position it in this way. And I would copy it. And then the next day I'd forget it again. And I was like, I was getting so frustrated. I'm like, man, maybe I can't retain this stuff. The problem is, is I would reference, I would do the wrong, I, I made several mistakes. I would reference old material to refresh my memory when I should have been looking up API documentation at the very most to try to make that happen. I think it helped. This is why like kind of supplementing courses together can teach you a different perspective, but it can also like courses are taught in different ways where it just, in a, this is going to sound like very unsophisticated, but it, it just, it trains your brain. Well, what do I want to say? It, different courses with different teaching styles train your brain in a, a slightly different way. And I think the more you like go over that content, the more it can help solidify the concepts. But the problem is when I would just reference the material, I was simply just copying it. I would type it out on my own, but I basically was just copying what I had just learned. There is no way you are going to reinforce anything with these courses that just basically have you repeat commands and do challenges that will solve this certain problem or it'll position a certain element by you just typing out the right property and um, position absolute, left, zero, blah, blah, blah. Like when you just learned it, you have to, you, you have to get out of the code editor. You have to build your own HTML file. You have to build your own CSS file and you have to continue to repeat these steps over and over and over. And I can't, I guess, I can't really explain why that's necessarily more effective in the beginning because you're not really building your own projects, right? Uh, but you are, there, there's just this, um, there's just this process in your brain of when you build your own file and you figure out how your editor works and why it's highlighting things in a different way. And it's just seeing your code in a different format. It's, it's the more exposure you get to repeating, trying to re like trying to talk about these fundamentals. It, it just, you need a lot of repetition with slightly different variations of how you're executing the code and eventually things start settling in with the fundamentals. So with these like more advanced concepts, what you can do is you could start building like mini projects that will actually be a solution. It'll utilize these concepts because they're more complex and it makes sense to build like a mini feature. But sometimes you're just like, you're trying to figure out and you can't really think of a project to necessarily do that. But when you do take your brain out of like what your brain's trained to do with Treehouse, put it in a slightly different environment, it helps reinforce things. I, I, I don't have like a more sophisticated way of explaining how to do it, but it's why you need to take these courses and even if they have a code editor, you have to take it out and put it in your own editor. You need to start parting sooner, not at the end of the course, but you need to start doing it. And if you just learned a concept, okay, cool. I'm actually gonna go ahead and recreate that element on my page. And I'm gonna position it with my own HTML and CSS file. I'm Just trust me, it'll help this little, distinction will help a lot. And it'll start also training you to not become dependent on learning all of your code, executing all of your code in their editor. Um, it would be interesting to like come up with like a process of like exactly how to do this, like the most efficient process. But yeah, I'll think about how I want to explain that in the future. But does that make sense? Or am I just like ranting about nothing? Uh, but I did not do that. You know, I built projects. It was everything within Treehouse. I never separated that into my own editor, into my own files. And when I started doing that, I noticed I was remembering things. I would wake up and I wouldn't forget as much. And then I, when I start leaning more on like looking up API documentation, it got a little bit easier to remember things. And then I was able to recall things better. It wasn't until I separated myself from the tutorial where this started happening and things started clicking. And sometimes you just need time for things to click. But this is the huge mistake. I just kept going from course to course to course to course, and I would take too long to reinforce these concepts. 
So think about it. Maybe my strategy and what I'm talking about makes no sense to you. Maybe it won't work, but try it. Give it time. Repeat that process over and over. And I think you'll find that some of these concepts, you'll be able to recall them a little bit easier. And, you know, like it's kind of silly, but like if they tell you to position something in the corner in the top left, maybe in your application, you position it in the bottom right. It's it's just slightly different, but now you have to think about, okay, well, obviously like this specific syntax is not something... Um, it, like I can't always position something that top left, where can I position it? How can I position it? And literally just moving this box around the screen, it's like, okay, I can position it in different corners. Yeah. But how do I, then you start thinking like, how do I position it in the center? I haven't really learned that yet, but I'm kind of curious and developing that curiosity can come from separating that from this very curated curriculum and doing it on your own. And you have to train yourself to do that early. And the more you do that, and the earlier you do it, the more you're gonna do it later down the road with these advanced concepts. And now you're gonna find that now you're remembering things a lot better. Like you just went through a course, your friend just went through a course, but your friend is unable to recall things. They have to reference that material again directly. But you, you spend a little extra time to take it out of that context and put it in a different context you're able to recall it a little bit better. Then you can help your friend. You can explain it to them. And then you reinforce it even more because you just taught something. You have to think about what you just learned in a different manner. You taught it, and now it's reinforced even more. So it's like I'm, I'm really being particular and very specific here, but there's a reason for it. This type of thinking is what's going to help solidify these concepts at a faster pace. Does that make sense, though? All right, let's catch up with chat. What's the best type of capstone project to complete in order to show your skills to potential employees? I would rewatch this video because I talked about that at the end of the video or at the beginning. I go over that a lot. I'm about to start applying for front end jobs. Should I be trying to improve my front end skills and get ready for the interviews or learn some back end to understand how everything works? Um, both. I mean, that use the treat the edu or the interviews as. Um, I mean, chances are you're not going to get an interview right away, right? So if you're trying to focus on front end positions, I mean, you do want to understand like at least how to interact with the back end, right? Um, but I would say like even when you're applying for interviews, people coming out of coding boot camps, they should still be spending a good chunk of time with project work, specifically, not not these like prep interview questions you can go over like prep interview questions but ultimately project work is going to be king and helping you finally land that job recruiter mentioned that i should be familiar with these subjects before applying event loop closures higher order functions curing uh promise wait i actually what is curing Working with function, it's used not only, uh, I honestly, like I'm blanking on that idea. Oh, transformational of functions that translates uh, from callables, it doesn't call a function, it just transforms it. I gotcha. Okay, I just didn't realize it had that name. Thank you. Um, FP and I don't know what FP is, in control flow, thoughts. I mean, yeah, that's all pretty legit, yeah. Object-oriented pro async, object-oriented programming. Um, I don't know. Um, it You're not really going to be dealing with a lot of object-oriented programming in JavaScript, but it, I still think it's a really useful programming, um, what do you want to call it? Uh, just a programming concept to understand. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that all sounds pretty pretty fair. Yeah. Let me catch up quickly. CSS, experiment with cascading effects, override global settings with more specific ones. It's critical to how CSS works fundamentally. Completely agree. Media queries uh, for CSS, always good to understand and implement responsive design. Media queries are tricky too. 
Um, I find that a lot of people have a little trouble like really understanding the concept. Um, they're so powerful though. Like when you really understand them, um, just being able to build, being able to build responsive websites in general is a really cool feeling and an accomplishment to just you give yourself a pat on the back for. Way back when we had to do everything with floats and it was really, yep, uh, yep, yep, yep. I had to do that with my first job still. That was five years ago or about five years ago. I was using a lot of float-based layouts. Don't sleep on the Odin project. It's pretty good and more project-based than many other free resources. It is, yeah. I agree with that. While I go through Treehouse, I feel like I should be doing my own websites as I learn, like a rough draft as I go. And that's just it. Like you could think of like smaller projects, smaller challenges to just pair what you're learning and reinforce those concepts. But you could also start like building pieces of your website. And the interesting thing about like using or building a giant project is and, and kind of just like learning pieces of it as you go it can also help curate your learning it can make you curious and be like man i almost have this front end done but i don't really understand how this um you know i really wanted this uh i don't know rotating gallery or want to be creative with how i uh, showed this data on the page and i don't quite know how to do that so i'm gonna pause for my tutorial i'm gonna pause for my course i'm gonna look up a tutorial on how to do that now you're getting curated learning now you're getting learning with a very specific purpose and in my experience a lot of people do better with having like learning because they have an objective they have something specific they want to build because it's more interesting right and it like anything that's more interesting and keeps you going and like really curious about something i think it's going to be easier to reinforce that so when you start getting like, and you, it's okay to like branch off and read this other article and then go back to your fundamentals. I think that's really healthy, but um, yeah, there's tons of strategies you can do to reinforce this stuff. All right, I'll catch up quickly. In regards to fundamentals, do you think Trios tech degree projects that you do outside of their environment is a good way to solidify their learning? I, don't, I think it's a waste of money at this point. I'm getting even people in my community and I've experienced this as well, not specifically with a tech degree, but I think their support's going downhill. Um, you can watch my video of why that's happening, but um, I, I think it's a waste of money. I I think their twenty five dollars is still something. Twenty five dollars a month is still something I recommend. But I've even before I never recommended their tech degree hard. You are describing the learn X the hard way method. Is that what that is? Because for me, at least I build the bigger projects in my own editor and have to push it to GitHub. I want to build my own projects, but I freeze on the design aspect. I did too. When you're trying to grow as a software or a front-end developer or just grow your front-end skills, like design holds you back, and it shouldn't. Any, In my opinion, the way I tackle, uh, if I build a website, I come up with the content. I get, like, what information do I need to deliver? Um, and how do I, like, what's my site structure of, like, how I deliver that information? And I have to think about like what belongs to my landing page. When you click a button, then what's the second piece of information I think my audience is ready for? And so like content-driven designs, I think is a really effective way at looking at design. And But it's also an easy way. You just come up with like the words that you're going to have on your website and where they're going to be placed. And then you position those words, right? And you... Um, then even just creating like a really rough mock-up that doesn't look good. You're not focused on fidelity. You're focused, you're not focused on quality. You just want to, okay, now I want to take these words that I think are important and I want to position them. Or I want to think about like, okay, maybe this information, the user isn't ready for it. So they're going to have to click this button to say they're interested. Now they're going to be taken to a page where they can explore that more, right? And just like laying out your website doesn't need to look pretty, nothing like that. I think that's the way to treat design. Now you can use like a, a contrast, you can focus on contrast. Now you can say, okay, well, this button, like you're not even thinking of color at the, the moment. This button alone, I think it has more prominence. It's the most important button on my page. So maybe it should have a higher contrast compared to the content around it. Now, you know, you maybe just like, you can use like editors to, that just focus on like black and white contrast. And you could just say, okay, this button is going to have more contrast in the colors around it. I also want my text readable as well. So, um, you know, this is going to have a brighter color. This might have a brighter color, whatever that is, versus if it's on this dark background. And you can make really simple decisions like that. And this is the point where with your websites, if you can do all of that, 
that's like 95% of the way there. This fidelity and like pretty designs and stuff like that, it's so much less relevant than having the right content and the right flow. And that's the, the content and how you position uh, it and like separate your links and your architecture of, um, you know, how people are going to navigate through your website. That is like 95% of it. You don't have to work on making it pretty. Making something pretty design wise and having it be ineffective is one of the like the, it, it's a huge time waster for designers. Any good designer is going to focus on all the other stuff that I, I mentioned first before they even touch trying to make it look pretty. And I think front end developers hold themselves back because they're always like, man, this doesn't look good. You probably are making progress with your website, but I think a lot of people psych themselves out. Like I would focus on making functional websites with the content that delivers the message that you want to deliver in the right flow. You get that process down. I'm telling you, like you are going to be much more marketable than caring about like whether your website looks great or not. Free code camp curriculum is amazing, but they only teach you the tools, but you're on your own for the projects. Yep. Yeah, free code camp is is really good to get you started. You're definitely gonna have to supplement after that. Speaks well for their organizations that they care about that. I agree. Would you be willing to do a mock interview on one of your one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions? Um, I've stayed away from it. It's something I could get better with, but I'm, I would rather, and this is probably um, something down the road, I would rather out, so I would rather, I have a few close friends that are very good, have done a lot of interviews and a lot of uh, mock interviews. It's something where it would take a good chunk of my time to get pretty damn good with it. And I only want to offer something and if I, if I feel like it's high quality. So it's not the direction I'm going in personally, but I would love down the road to bring in a few of my friends, pay them a good amount of money to do those mock interviews and then, you know, charge for that. That's something I could see myself doing down the road. I personally feel like there are people that are better at mock interviews than I am and I'd rather delegate that. So it's not something I offer now, but it's something I could offer in like the next three to six months, if that makes sense. So I usually stay away from mock interviews specifically. It's a really useful thing and people that do offer mock interviews usually are pretty helpful. All right, um, shoot. It's amazing how much time flies with these live streams. Any final remaining questions? Any questions I didn't answer? I've got like 10 minutes, something like that. Let's go ahead and answer any remaining questions. I feel like this outline, this is something that's gonna take time, but what I want to do ultimately is go over the concepts that I think are higher priority that most employers would care about and kind of the sequential order of how I would learn these concepts. Because I think if you give that to someone, I think it give people more confidence in their self-taught path. I know there's a little bit of a delay. So any final questions that you guys have? Hopefully this is fun. Hopefully this is uh, helpful. Are you dressing up for Halloween? I am not. I am not, unfortunately. I love Halloween. It's one of my favorite holidays. Um, I'm just, until May... My yeah, until May, I'm just focused on my. I just want to make this business work. I'm literally dumping every bit of time I have to make this business work. So I'm skipping holidays. Probably not going to skip Christmas, but um, no, unfortunately not. I got to focus on my business this year. Bro, this is facts. Appreciate that. Glad it was helpful. Hey, awesome. If there are no final questions, we could wrap it up here. Um, I appreciate everyone joining. Every Friday we do this live stream. Um, so if you are truly stuck, you know, feel free to book a one-on-one. -on -one. You can find it in the details below in the description. Um, my one-on-ones are designed to like, I don't want you to become dependent on me. I'm not trying to get all of your money. I just, sometimes if you get really stuck and you need a little bit of help, I 
would love to dig into your situation a bit and kind of help you move forward. But ultimately, we're going to keep doing these free live Q&As um, and explore. I, I want to do a little bit more live Q&As that are focused on helping self-taught developers. I want to make this path work. I don't want to see so many self-taught developers giving up. Um, money. Your financials should not be a limiter in you becoming a software engineer. You should be able to stabilize your financial situation before you pursue it heavily. That's always a recommendation, but it's it's very accessible. In fact, it's free if you can make it happen. Um, so I want to make sure that we just provide a little bit more guidance for people like that. Uh, what days do you have live time? Whoops. Um, you're welcome, Ryan. Yeah, it's the questions really that provide the most value. Um, what days do you have live time? It's usually, I've been doing it 2.30 Central Time every Friday. It might eventually switch to 1.30 Central Time, but right now 2.30 is perfect for a while. You as well, Chuck. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for the questions. Good night, boys. If I can work as a developer, anyone can, and I mean it, boys. Keep on going. Build your GitHub and let's go. Self-taught gang. I love it. I love it, username taken. I love it. You're welcome. Looking for group. What's that? Would you do a live portfolio review? Um, or is that something you only do on your one-on-one? I used to do them all the time. Yeah, I'm down to do those if people want them. I just need enough requests to do them. And I'll do those. I, I have so much fun with portfolio reviews. I have a lot of fun with them. I have maybe like a dozen or two dozen videos on portfolio reviews. So look at old videos in my channel and you'll be able to see that. All right, cool. Let's wrap it up here. Everyone, thank you so much for coming out. I really appreciate it. Love these live streams. They're super fun for me. Um, and if you have any topics you want me to go over with live streams, of course, if you're watching this video afterwards, recommend it to me. You have a Discord. You could DM me or just comment below. But Good luck. I promise you, you can achieve this. I promise you, you can become a software engineer. I know sometimes it can be discouraging, uh, especially if you don't curate your feed properly on these social media sites. Remember, these social media sites are designed to keep people on them as long as possible. They're not necessarily designed to make you happy, excited, or motivated. You have to put the due diligence to curate your feed and make the algorithms work for you. That's where you can find your source of motivation, but keep pushing forward keep coding, love what you do, get curious about it, and you will get that position eventually. So thanks for coming by. Good luck on all of your projects and happy coding, everyone. Take care.